There is a real Olympian Lisa Curry, isn't there? Yeah, that's why I'm Olympian Lisa Curry. Because she took Lisa Curry on all socials, so I took Olympian Lisa <laughs> Curry. So wait, am I okay to try the tea? Yes, of course. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. Go. Okay. The tea I chose for you is one of my favorite teas in the whole wide world. It's Marriage Frere's Plain and Loon Tea. It, you, it is delicious. We know That it. is excellent. Okay, that's it. That's that the pod. Excellent. We're done. As long as you like it, then we send people home. That is, that's a top three for me. Is it really? Yeah, I think you, so. Are you a big tea drinker? I drink a lot of tea because it keeps me from just like, because I'm like, well, I'm not I don't want to just sit at home and just like have a cocktail because I'm bored of water, you know? I, I don't want to be one of those drink. people that's like, I'm just going to get hammered because I'm bored. I'm like, well, I'll drink tea, so it's something a little different. Is it sad? I don't know what age I was when getting hammered was just a cure for boredom. I don't know when it was, but it, it's here. Like, it's definitely here. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> I don't know when that happened, but I find that, like, I found myself like, oh, I guess I'll just have a beer. Maybe that was, you know what? I did a lot of that during lockdown where I was just like, I mean, what else am I going to do? I may as well have a margarita at 2 p.m. It's not like I fucking work anymore, apparently. Um, you no, know, that's and what now the I'm lockdown's like, about. oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you're like, no, the lockdown's done. Yeah. <laughs> um, but before I forget, for those steeping at home, because our steepers steep at home. Love it. I love how I look at you and point at the camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> for those steeping at home, I would go 200, not 212, because it's a slightly more delicate tea. Um, you could do it from like three to five minutes, I would say, on the lighter end. That's just me. That's mm -hmm. how I operate. Unless you want it really caffeine -y, at which point, like, go for six. What do I, you know? Sure. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I don't know. See, I'm like, here's the thing. I was a barista for years, and I, I was also a bartender for years, but I don't, like, the whole, I know you're supposed to do, like, a lower temperature for, like, white teas and sure, a higher sure, sure. temperature for black teas. Yeah. And that's that's where that ends. I don't, I don't. <laughs> you're like, I'm done No, when that. you said 200, I was like, what? Mm. <laughs> so what's so funny is, like, Here's my problem with tea culture, mm -hmm. okay? Can I go I rant for a second? I swear. By the way, if you think that we're, like, not going to talk about the Polish princess, no, we, we are. Um, I just want you to be prepared for that. No, so I love this, yeah. Keep it in your head. Uh -huh. The reason that more people don't drink tea, in my opinion, is because there's such a hoity-toity, obnoxious nature to mm -hmm. tea drinking, where it's like, well, it has to be brewed at this temperature and for this time, and mm -hmm. it should have notes of mm -hmm. whatever the hell. And then people are like, Cool. If I want a cup of coffee, I just brew a cup. Well, also like me. a basic, basic like shitty Seven Eleven coffee. It's like you put cream and sugar in it. You know sure. what you're gonna get. Of course. If you have like a Twinings chamomile tea, you're like, Ugh, this is the worst thing I've ever tasted. Who is who likes chamomile? And then you have a really good one, and you're like, oh, this is a different experience entirely. Yeah. And not like I put, I put. Uh, honey and like a little oat milk in my black tea, but Love never that in. You did that. You, oh, thanks. <laughs> Love it. But I would never like chamomile or green tea. I just have plain, so I'm like, it's got to taste delicious. Absolutely. There's nothing to mask the flavor. That, so the problem is also like a lot of people are like drinking, and this is not me talking shit, but like a lot of people are like drinking like Lipton, being like, I don't love tea. I'm like, well, yeah. I wouldn't love that either. Yeah, you're like, because you're not drinking tea. You're drinking like dust that's like in little. Sachets? Is that how you would say? How yes, do you? Yes. Is this the word? Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay, everyone. So, um, so there's a reason it's five dollars for six hundred of them. Yeah, I was gonna say tweet at uh, <laughs> what is it? A, a, a Haley Sakuri, something oh, like that. Oh, that's a different thing. That's uh, my my. Well, my Twitter is Lisa underscore Curry. Oh, I'm and sorry. Then my <laughs> by the way, can we talk about your branding, by the way? Yeah. It's a Lisa underscore Curry in one place. It's a Hey Lisa Curry it. somewhere else. Well, I didn't. Here's It's Olympian thing. Lisa Curry yeah. somewhere else. It's Olympian Lisa Curry everywhere but Twitter. But because so. There is a real Olympian Lisa Curry, isn't there? Yeah. That's why I'm Olympian Lisa Curry. Because she took Lisa Curry on all socials. So I took Olympian Lisa Curry. <laughs> Is that really true? Sort of Christ. That is the greatest story I've ever heard. Um, you, Thank you. She took yours. You'll take hers. I'm like, she took our name. Also, also, what fucking business do you have being an like? She's 15 Olympic medals. Put Olympian in your. That would be on my birth certificate if yeah. I had 15 medals. Instead of putting like Mister under under salutation, it would be Olympian. Yeah. yeah. It would be medalist. That's oh, how you medalist. would. That's how you would. Does she speak have gold? to me. 
she has gold, but I don't remember. I want to say like three gold, and then the rest are different. I mean, collect okay, all so of she's them. She's not that yeah. impressive. Yeah, Just I know, three right? gold. <laughs> <laughs> what was her event? I'm dying to Swimming. Know. And what's funny is I was a swimmer all through high school, and I was a lifeguard, and we're the same height. She's also blonde. She has she has like piercing blue eyes. And she's also like shredded. Yeah, my least she's favorite part about you is your lack of piercing blue <laughs> eyes. That's been my big issue with you generally. She uh I have had friends tag me in articles about her thinking it was me. And they were like, one friend was like, Congrats. And it was an article about her dating. <laughs> an Elvis impersonator. And I was like, you should never congratulate anyone on that, let alone me. Um, also, that's not me. Was it a really good impersonator? Like, oh, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> because I'm a little more open to it. Like, I don't, I, I, if you had said to me two years ago, like, hey, I'm dating an Elvis impersonator, I would have been like, cool. And then turned to someone as soon as you walked away and been like, um, you heard that also, right? <laughs> but after seeing the movie Elvis, I'm kind of like, well, he was pretty handsome. Like, I, you know, that guy, what, Austin Butler, I think his name, handsome guy. If that were yeah. the impersonator, I'm not fully opposed to it. Yeah, I would still be ashamed of his career as his partner. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you need to be. You My need partner to be. is, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, sorry, uh, I'm busy tonight. Uh, yeah, my fiance's podcast. Yeah, I think that's, you know, so I think I've got that locked, you know? Hilarious. I mean, like that's, when you, uh, w- tell me if this is inappropriate and we can cut no, it if go it is. For it. Um, are, are you single or in a relationship? Single. Okay. When you're single, do you lead with like, I have a podcast? When does it come up when you're like, or I do comedy or do you Ooh. avoid um, bringing it up? You know what? I took like, oh. Uh, when I am on apps, I'm not currently, but when I am, you're missing nothing. By the I way, put, yeah. yeah, I, I had taken comedian out of my bio because, because of the percentage of men that the first thing they say is like, tell me a joke. I bet I could be a comedian. And I'm like, this is so exhausting. I just can't, I can't, it's like not, it's not even fun to use as like a filtering process to not talk to those guys. No. Cause it's such a high percentage that I'm like, this is exhausting actually. That's um, insanity. Yeah. But, like, but here's the thing. This is going to sound terrible. It's insane. And yet, like, I'm not fully surprised by what you're telling me. Yeah. You know what? I used to be gentler about it. But now, like, if I'm on a date with a guy and I, you know, stand up comes up, it, I, I will say 95% of men will go, I, I could do that. Are you serious? I always, people always tell me I could do stand up. And I will look at, at them and I'm like, you could not. You could never. <laughs> So we we are, we are so different in our approach. When people tell me that, when people go, oh, uh, people say I could do it, I go, cool, go do it. I used to. No, I used to. And now I'm just like, no. Well, also because I'm like, I'm in my 30s. Like if, you're, if you've if you been thinking about it your whole life and you're a 45-year-old man and you, you still haven't done it, you're not going to do it. No, unless you're Rodney Dangerfield. Unless I don't you get a divorce and you go through like your midlife crisis and you can't afford a Corvette or whatever. And then I guess you'll go to an open mic and ruin my life. <laughs> I was going to say, so I, 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 I don't think that I would be the one who's buying the Corvette. So I do, I'm in my 30s and I do need to plan if you, out. If you split it with your fiance, she would have to buy it for you. Yeah. For your oh, midlife yeah, crisis going away party. Listen, we, I plan to, to be with her for the rest of my life, but I will tell you this. Like I am in my 30s. I'm already thinking about what I should have as a midlife crisis. Like I haven't fully landed on Ooh, something, yeah. but like I do want to have something really cool. Here's the fun thing about comedy, though. You can just have like a rolling life crisis. Oh, just, I have that now. So you don't. <laughs> yeah. Everything is justified by you're in some stage of a crisis. Oh, 100 percent. I um, so who was it? It actually might have been her, but someone sent me something the other day where it said um which oh you're in a relationship so mm-hmm. one of you has an existential crisis every night and the other one falls asleep immediately and i was like triggering because uh, i'm the existential crisis one. Oh, i go to sleep at night and right before i go to sleep i'm like where did i take a wrong turn <laughs> i'm just like in life um how did i get here uh and then i and then i will usually like turn over and be like hey my life is weird and I hate it. <laughs> and, you know, I just be like, and she's like, cool. I'm like trying to sleep. And I'm like, yeah, no, me too. Me too. Why is it the way that it is? <laughs> you know? So that's what I do every night. You know, do you, I, I don't that's know if really that your night funny. routine. It's um, fun. My nightly routine is an hour before I would like to be asleep. I take an edible and then. <laughs> so uh, you're much calmer, much more relaxed. Yeah. And then, and then it depends. I mean, like last night I went to bed and I was watching like, righteous gemstones but most of the times i'll be like doing all the little new york times crossword 
puzzles and the Sudoku and the real one or the mini? The oh, real you do one, all the games. I'm not good at it. Yeah, I do all the games. So I'll just like get. We I'll just do the talk. games until I can't keep my eyes open anymore. And yeah. Then that's how I go to sleep. It's probably not good for me, but. No, so we're the same. You know, what's really embarrassing. A friend of mine that I was, he was actually our head writer at um, Jim Jeffrey's show. My friend Jason Reich wrote a New York Times crossword puzzle. And I, I texted him. I was like, oh my God, was this, is this you? Is this you? And he's like, yeah, that's, I wrote that, you know, months ago or whatever. It just came out and I was so excited. I couldn't get fucking 10 words. And it was like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. I was like, this is so hard. And then I was like, I'm so embarrassed because my friend wrote this. Somebody I've worked on a show with wrote this. And not like, I think he's very smart, but I'm like, how fucking dumb am I? I can't even like speak my friend's language. <laughs> I mean, do you think that, that someone like that, first off, I don't want to blow up his spot, Mr. Reish. <laughs> But he may have had some guidance. Is it fair to say? Maybe. I don't know. He's very smart. Well, I don't doubt He's that. Very smart. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Reish, I think you're a brilliant man. Um, but did he throw in any fun things like Blank Jeffries, an Australian comic? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Actually, now that you say that, not only did he not, but now I didn't even realize before that I needed to be mad that I wasn't included in the puzzle. And now I'm upset. W- you were the what Olympian the version fuck? of you. Me either. Like if it said it said uh, <laughs> Olympic 15, 15 medal My Olympian. My friend wrote a New York Times crossword puzzle and did not make me a clue. Like what do I need to do here? I, you know what I do? <laughs> this is embarrassing. I have tweeted at famous people <laughs> and been like, you were a clue today. Did you know that? This is amazing. Oh my God. I did that one time. So I, there's, well, not that. A more embarrassing version of that. If I don't you, know if, if that you exists, could but believe. go ahead. Yeah. So um, I'm friends with this woman, Amy Phillips. She is j- brilliant. Um, we love you, Amy. Amy's from, she did Second City. She does, uh, She. I'm not a housewife's person, but so sure. I don't understand it. So I'm probably going to get things wrong, but she she parodies know. all the housewives. Women. Oh, she okay. had a she had a show on Radio Andy on Sirius XM, and she does impressions of all the housewives, and she does, she's a h- huge success. Years what is ago, that like? <laughs> being, right? a, being a huge success, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will ask her. Yeah, let me know. Uh, she didn't reply to my last message, so we'll see. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she, um, I messaged her one day. I was like, "Holy shit, you're in the New York Times crossword!" And she was so excited. And she looked and she was like, "Oh, it's Emo Phillips. It's not Amy Phillips." And then I felt so fucking bad because I was like, "Oh no!" Like I'm a stand up, and I forgot that Emo Phillips existed for this moment and also like i played this weird prank on my friend on accident where i was just like mean to her kind of it's weird i wasn't gonna say this is like weird (laughs) to bring up on the pod but like she did tell me about that (laughs) and um she was hurt which is crazy yeah and i felt bad yeah because i was just like i I think lisa meant to hurt you that's what i said (laughs) to her which is we're not even that close (laughs) um anyway no yeah no why 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 continue on that um i do yeah i think about all that stuff of just like uh, if I ended up in a crossword, mm-hmm. hypothetically, mm-hmm. number one, what would the clue be? And number two, would people hit me up and be like, hey, I found you in there? Because my fear would be the clue mm-hmm. would be something awful. Sure. Like the clue would be like, like, um, like blank lands at uh, whose one ear sticks out a little longer than the other, sticks out a little wider, you know? And then I'd be like, that's me. Mine would be who took second place Polish princess in Northwest Indiana. So let's get back to that. In 1989. <laughs> So, so I, okay. Sport? So you, I'm sorry, you, you said in Indiana. Uh-huh. So there are a couple of things that we're now assuming here. So first off, we're assuming mm-hmm. that there's a huge Polish population in Indiana. Humongous. So that's actually yeah. true. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Chicago, so I grew up in Northwest Indiana specifically, and I grew up like 45 minutes outside of downtown Chicago. Wait, what? And, yeah. Where in, where in Indiana? Because I lived in Chicago. Oh, this little town called Cedar Lake. Um, it's just across state line and just south a little, but Chicago, as you probably know, then is the, after Warsaw is the second largest population of Polish people in the world. They're everywhere. And I loved it. So many. And so like my, my whole Polish side of the family is from actually from East Chicago, which is not the Eastern part of Chicago. Anyone visiting Chicago, (laughs) just know that East Chicago is in Indiana and it's a different vibe entirely. Um, but yeah, huge Polish population. And uh, my grandpa was uh, somebody that was very proud of his heritage. And so he yeah. got me involved in all this stuff. And then I used to speak Polish when I was a kid and I lost it. And that's a whole story. But I, then I just went to Poland for the first time in my life this April. And it was crazy. It was amazing. Um, Holy anyway. crap. Did any of it come back? 
No, it all sounds very familiar, but okay. I'm like, I don't, I want to try to learn it, but it's so fucking hard. It's like all consonants. Nothing <laughs> looks like, nothing is phonetical. Like the, and I only grew up speaking it, not reading it. So now reading it, I'm like, what the fuck does that say? Like it may as well be in Sanskrit or something. Which like, it almost is. <laughs> it almost is, yeah. That's, so I am technically... I am Polish, Hungarian, or sorry, Polish, Austrian, and German. Okay. If my mother's listening, she's going to be like, you better get these right. <laughs> um, but the rumor, as I have been told, is that my last name, Lanzette, was before Ellis Island, where they made it cool, was Lancet, L-A-N-C-E-T, which oh. is apparently was a small uh, like little town in Poland. Oh, interesting. I know. I, um, I've tried looking it up. You Google go to does Poland. not It's really inexpensive, it. and it is fucking beautiful i was blown away by warsaw it's spotless really excellent food yeah really beautiful i don't eat meat am i in trouble over there probably yeah okay i mean i love how your face just dropped you're like probably yes yeah, i mean you could get like borscht but then like it usually comes with meat dumplings in it yum you know but you could get fucking you know sauerkraut pierogi or there's a lot of stuff. I sauerkraut. I would yeah. love that I came back. Well, what was your favorite dish? I just had sauerkraut. For I, just had a, just, I just had a mountain of sauerkraut. Crazy story. Sorry, this is like, I'm, now I'm going off in a to totally, totally different direction. I'm into it. But Hit when me. I was out there, I, I met some cousins and uh, I saw like the town my family is from, the village my family is from. And I'm sorry, I cannot remember the name of it for the fucking life of me. It's like two and a half out hours outside of Krakow. Um, if anyone knows it, I want you to just tweet <laughs> intensely at least and be like, how dare you? It's really, really small. And uh, I found out that one of my cousins who, weirdly, who died two weeks to the date after I was born. One of my cousins was, um, he was a Catholic priest and he was imprisoned in Dachau for helping Jews during the war. And my family's home in that town is on a placard in the middle of the in the middle of the village. And it's it's listed as a notable place because my family conspired against the Nazis. I'm like, how fucking cool is that? I would tell everybody. Also, that like, how did I just find this out in April? What's going you on? You just found this out. I just found this out. Forget for the first comedian <laughs> in your bio. I would put that in my bio. Olympian slash. Yeah. Slash my, my family, family conspired <laughs> against the Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, my family's on the right side of history. Yeah. Now, I need to know, do you smoke? Are you a drinker? <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? I only do six feet now. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I've not been to Poland. I I would love to go. By the way, I've never sat like this in the pod. This is very this weird is, that I'm doing this. Right. I'm, like, I'm like, I'm bringing it out of you. Yeah, I'm just like, hey. It was hey. also my round trip ticket there was only like $600. There's just under no $600 way that's true. On Delta. Were you in the cargo pit? <laughs> no, what, how did no, you? It was just so... It just nobody's going to fucking Warsaw. I'll go. It's it was amazing. Go. I no one has to convince. If someone says blah 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 Europe, I'm like sure. I'm the same way. It's Great. it's really a sickness. If you guys were like, hey, we were thinking about popping over to Russia after this, I'd be like, I mean, I guess why not? Sure. I may as well check it out. Russia is only one of the only places where I'm a little <laughs> like, you know, maybe not right now. Like, like I would love to go to St. Petersburg. Uh -huh. I think it sounds lovely. Sure. When I was uh, in Europe with a bunch of friends, <laughs> I sound like a shithead. When I was in Europe <laughs> with a bunch of friends, uh, one of my buddies was like, we should go to St. Petersburg. And the other one was like, so given the political climate, maybe not. And I was yeah. like, Touche. This guy knows what yeah. he's talking about. Um, yeah. And we didn't. Instead, we went to Sweden. Oh, yeah. I've never been. It's it's lovely. Yeah. It's a lovely place. Um, it feels a, a lot like you just walked into a room and you're like, cool. All right, I've seen it. Um, like there's sure. just like you know, it's very, it's wonderful. It's so so great. Mm -hmm. But it also was just like, you know, it was like a small cute country. Sure. There's something adorable about it, and um, I I had a great time, and uh, you know, I I don't necessarily know that I needed to spend more than three days there. Wait, I have been. I've been to Stockholm for like a week. Okay. Um, everybody, what, uh, if Lisa smells bread, uh, toast specifically, I'll tell you. And we can, we'll flag it. Just for a um, second. I was like, no, it's Switzerland I haven't been to, not Sweden. Um, is it just like, area. you were just like, once you became a Polish princess, you were like, I don't even need to remember anything anymore. It's because I'm, yeah. I'm You're royalty. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> can you wait? So I, we're not uh -huh. going to, like, we will eventually get to the segment. I'm fine with that. Uh -huh. I, I will not. I will not rest until I mm -hmm. get the story of how you uh -huh. was it runner up or you were the the Polish princess. No, I was second place. So there was a Polish princess contest. So you were all in like 
traditional Polish costumes and dancing and yeah, yeah. singing and whatever else was transpiring. I have, I don't really have any memory of it, although my only memory of it was first place got a huge trophy and I got a small, very cool trophy. It's a tiny little like gold crown with like a red velvet cushion inside. I love it. It's a, Oh, you still have it. Not only do I still have it, but I just moved into a new place, but it's usually behind me, <laughs> behind my desk on a shelf so people could see it when I'm on a Zoom. I really you hope, better believe. I hope when you're writing for Jim, he, you just had it in the background. He was like, yeah, we get it. Yeah. Nice. That's the only thing I bring into the nice little trophy. The, the girl I'm sharing the office with has a pee body, and I'm like, but <laughs> <laughs> all I my only memory of it was because I was like six or something at the time. But the the winner, the first place, got a huge trophy, and I got a small trophy, and one of those little women my age will remember this. These popples. These, uh, they were like these stuffed animals that folded into themselves. They had like a pocket on their butt and then they folded back into themselves. Mm -hmm. And I had wanted one forever. And I was like, oh, I fucking want, fuck first place. First place didn't get a Popples. I got a Popples. So what's weird is they, when they think back on the festival, they talk about the fact they should have given the Popples in the first place. Yeah. Because it was like another six year old girl who was probably like, what? (laughs) What just happened? At age six, were you just like, I've made it. More or less. Yeah. Mom, dad, I've made it. I'm a Polish princess. Yeah. Second place. I was like, this is pretty much like when Streisand was in Funny Girl. Same thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know what, honestly, I don't think Streisand <laughs> felt as accomplished as you probably did. Well, I guess now is as good a time as any. Do you want to jump to the to the newly friend game for a second? Sure. It's like the newlywed game, but we're friends. Um, unless there's something I need to know. Um, oh. I think I would have known. Uh, so the way this works is um, I ask you a question. You write down your answer, um, but you don't don't say it out loud. You write it down. I'm going to okay. write down what I think your answer is. We'll okay. flip our boards and see if we got the same answer. And then we'll do the same thing for me. Okay. We're going to do the same question today. But first, we're going for you. So I'm going to ask you. Don't tell me. Write it down. Your handle is Olympian Lisa Curry, but you're not an Olympian. No. But my question for you, if you could have a gold medal in any Olympic sport, what would it be? But don't tell me. Write it down. I'm going to try and guess this. Oh, shit. What are even the Olympic sports? Well, here's the... Should we narrow down to summer or winter? Because I feel like that might help. Which do you prefer? Which summer or winter Olympics? Up? Summer, I guess. But what else? What? Oh. Are we doing summer or winter? And then I'll guess. Oh, no. Well, I don't... Oh God! This why is it so hard to choose? Like, like I'm gonna get stabbed if I yeah, don't. Well, so I, we do have a guy in the bathroom. Correctly, um, let's say winter. Okay. So yeah. all right. So okay. so what you're writing down is if you could gold medal in any winter Olympic sport, what would it be? Um, all right. You ready to flip your board on three? Mm-hmm. One, one, two, two three. three. Flip. Oh, that's oh. a really good one. Uh, you said downhill skiing. I said snowboarding. Oh, see, I've been snowboarding twice in the last time I gave myself a concussion. Um, the second time, like, when I gave myself a concussion? Not, I don't know what I'm doing. No. It's not, but I'm like with skiing. So I was going to say figure skating because it looks dope. But it's like, who can you impress if you can only like do it in an arena a handful of times a year? Like Nobody. If you're, if you're an Olympic downhill skier, yeah, you can go to fucking Vail on one of these getaways with all these rich fucks and then you blow them Those away classic ones, what yeah. is what is a better way to network i have literally seen because i've been to Vail, mm-hmm. not a rich fuck but wannabe <laughs> i uh <laughs> saw, saw these people do, like with the have you have you skied a bit i've only water skied so I've never, I've never been. Okay, big dog. <laughs> uh, I like the people that have like the real crooked poles, like, which just means like you're really good or something. I don't oh. know. I'm not a great skier. No idea. But I see the people do that, like doing like the swish, 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 swish stuff. And uh-huh. then they like, like come down and they're in like, you could just tell they're in expensive outfits with like really expensive jackets, the fanciest goggles. Uh-huh. And I'm there in my ski onesie and I'm just like, hi, <laughs> you know, but I like, I want to be them. But instead I'm just, I'm just like. I, I'm that I'm the mascot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'd there. Be in like even worse. I'd be in like snow pants and a free hoodie I got from a comedy club. <laughs> the, the, let me be clear. The onesie was free and it says Bud Light Seltzer on it. So I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm and not like you're sponsored. You're like, I, in a way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, they needed to get rid of these and it fit me. Um, And it's mango flavor. Yeah. Um, OK, so we'll do the same question for summer me. or winter for you. I'm going to I'm going to stick with winter. I'm going to write this. 
And then under it, I'm just going to write the one that I love watching. <laughs> um, I'm just going to put it in little parentheses because I really do enjoy watching it. I'll give you half a point if you get it. I don't think you will. Okay. All right. Okay. Flip your board on one, two, three. <gasps> okay. So, all right. <laughs> Lisa wrote curling. I wrote speed skating, but under it, I wrote curling. Um, now, the reason that I wrote curling, that I didn't choose curling, is because I want the gold for me. Like, I curling is a team sport. I want that oh, gold Oh, I didn't solo. know it was a team sport. Well, one or of I the guys. I did, oh, I didn't. He does pay a little attention. scrub brush. I'm not using the right lingo. See, I was just thinking. I was just thinking that one looks really easy, and I really want this for you. And you, <laughs> and I thought, what is this, what is the most likely for you? That is so sweet that you think in your head there's a possibility, <laughs> no matter how remote, that I could actually like in your head. You're like, you know what? Like if he maybe if he if put really all this time and effort in, yeah. It, listen, if you're 45 and you haven't gone to an open mic yet, it's not going to happen. But if you <laughs> are in your 30s and you want to start curling, the time is now. I always thought speed skating was cool because I'm like, I I love going fast. Oh yeah, and I it's scary, but it's fun. I've looked into um, stunt driving classes. They're like forty five hundred bucks or something. I really want, but I'm like, I have... was there a hundred at the end of the forty five? There, <laughs> that seems humongous. Um, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Did they give you a car with that? Yeah, no. You just get like a hundred license, I think. Yeah, a friend of mine was in um, in that movie Death Proof, and she's she was just an actor, just an actor. She's an actor. Yeah, Tracy. way to go. <laughs> and um, her Tarantino cast her and then paid for her to take stunt driving lessons so i'm Are like how fucking dope real? that you got to do that yeah um mm -hmm. and then you hit her up and you're like i think i just saw you in a crossword but it wasn't actually her <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was like yeah. totally different tracy i'm so sorry no amy's not alone yeah. um you're like hey amy i did this to somebody else um <laughs> no i would love to do uh stunt driving what a joy just to learn how to like fishtail so and like you know do that the other or, like boat stunt driving where are you going with boat God, stunt I don't driving? Know. Well, I grew up on a lake. I grew up. I oh, I had a boating God. license when I was nine, so I'm like a very. Oh yeah, me too. I'm yeah. a very boating. Also me. Person. Um, <laughs> age nine, they give licenses to nine year olds. Well, they didn't. They did. They it's did, Indiana, and then you know? and then they changed the law as soon as I got it because I think <laughs> I think the paperwork went through and they it's were called like, Lisa's what the law. Fuck, happened. And so, but I was grandfathered in, so I was still able to keep my license. Do you still have it? When are we I going got, boating? I re up to the next year just for fun. I'm, I'm in, I'm in, boating, and like painting are two things where I'm like, no, I'm an expert. Oh, are you or a good in painter? A way, I used to paint houses for a living. So I, what I can, is I happening also, right now? I also do like collages and stuff. I don't. I mean, not like a good, like not traditional art. I'm shaky at, but like, I'm worried that you're looking around here being like not the best. No. <laughs> What is this? It's below eggshell. <laughs> <laughs> the mat is trash. Um, I am bothered by textured walls because you can't really, it's so hard to paint a mural on oh, it because of the that way right that. There? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For those that are listening and not watching, um, <laughs> Lisa just told this. me that my house is garbage. And um, No, it's a gorgeous house. We, you don't even know. I'm not we, leaving, actually. Yeah, no, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you can move in. Um, we have two textured. Yeah, something like that. Two texture walls. In in our defense, and I do want to defend us. Um, we didn't texture them ourselves. We moved in oh, and yeah, they yeah, were yeah. textured. Uh -huh. You painted houses. Yeah, my first job in LA was doing like construction. For I, <laughs> what is going on right now? Like this is the most confusing interview we've ever had on this podcast. I'm not podcast. full of shit. I swear to God, all of this is. You so for those who are all. listening, I just want to be really clear. Okay, so Lisa, according to the the discussion we've had. Lisa, first off, the most shocking thing is like actually knows how to do the crossword. I still don't know how to do that. She does the crossword boating license. Boating license. Miss Polish Princess, <laughs> 1989. Okay. It paints houses and hasn't skied, but has uh is a proficient water skier. I'm like moderate. Now. Moderate. It's been it's been years since I did it regularly. Mm, interesting. Yeah, no, I remember yeah, me and your dad talked about that, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, does she water ski? And he goes, I don't keep up with her. I don't know. Yeah, and I was like, like no. I don't know. It's not, it doesn't impress me. He's like, if she talked about it in her stand up, I didn't hear it. Uh, and I was like, oh, <laughs> fair enough. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you painted houses? Yeah. Well, it I did like, I did like full on construction because one of my mom's sisters, who's uh, w one of the bad ones, um, okay, so she's she's never a, cared for her. she's a, yeah, who does? Well, it's a fun bit. You start doing that. I do that all the time. You start <laughs> no, using I love it. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. so much. She is a general contractor in, um, she lives in West Covina, I think. 
Like Landora. I only West know Covina. that from Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Truly, I've never been to West oh. Covina. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I worked for her when I first moved to here. But she would, uh, although I'm an, I'm an, an excellent painter, she would put me on all the bitch jobs. Like, sorry, I don't know if I get. Uh, <clears throat> Who but she'd have me here? like power you, sand- like oh, up. <laughs> she'd have me like power sanding ceilings and shit. And yeah. Come on. Eight dollars an hour. Come on. Get out of here. Anyway. You, you gotta it's a neck crook. It's a whole, with a power sander up there. With, I don't care you for got it. You got goggles and you have to have a hair th- it's a whole it I hate it. It yeah. sucks. Yeah, it was yeah. the worst. It was the worst. When we saw the this is again, this is gonna sound like the most obnoxious podcast in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, Jess and I went to see the Sistine Chapel. Ooh, I know we're really awesome. And um, <laughs> I and, and they're like, yeah, and, you know, and, and Michelangelo painted all of this by hand. And I'm like looking, and I'm like, no, it would have hurt my neck too much. Would have given up after a day and a half. Here's the thing, it is impressive art, people. Okay, I love. I'm a huge art fan. Yeah, it's very impressive. Also, what the fuck else did he have to do? I I mean, give me a break. He probably didn't. I, he probably set up a bunch of beams so he was laying down and painting. He's probably like half high on peyote or whatever. Give me a damn that break. Sounds lovely. Yeah. If you had an entire lifetime, I'm sure you could paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Here's Give me the a thing. break. I heard that when he was off, he was working on his 401k and he was filing his it's taxes. It's like, what are your followers on Instagram, my guy? Do you Can you even make a TikTok? Uh, he, you know what's weird? He tried once. Never did it again. <laughs> never did it again. Because he didn't get the mouthing correct, so no one liked it. This is, I mean, I say this in jest, but also, like, truly, when people are like, can you believe this artist in 1400 did this thing? I'm like, they did nothing else. Could you know what I could do with a fucking canvas and some paint if I didn't have to be on social media or answer my goddamn phone? <laughs> or, like... That's the, the phone just, is the, the problem. The number, of, the number of things that we're supposed to be doing doing at all times yeah it's like i can't you can't do they weren't drinking eight glasses of water a day they weren't working out three times a week no <laughs> he was he he appeared and i might be were there even taxes <laughs> well I, so he yes, did he used yes. to tax but he um which is a cheat uh, he didn't really do them uh i believe he was kind of he might have been slightly rotund a bit of a rounder mm. gent i don't remember if mm. this is true i just remember i saw david and that was not r- round that yeah. was a very built man yeah. um, well and now it's illegal to look at it if is, you're in florida oh yeah so, oh yeah. i heard that that teacher lost her job <laughs> yeah i heard about that which is funny because i was looking at it and then i literally thought to myself fire me <laughs> you know i yeah. would love it uh seriously um no but i loved i absolutely loved it but i agree with you wholeheartedly the social media thing is funny because i think that you are one of the only people that i still go on twitter to occasionally like thank you how do you deal with that cesspool i am baffled that you're still there it's it's you know this week i was like i don't know if i want to still be here uh Cause I tweeted about Russell Brand and then I get, I've been getting lately. It's just been like a barrage of trolls replying to everything. And they're like, you don't know you fucking bitch. And this, and, and I'm like, I, this is really hostile. None of these people before I was like, I have such great followers cause people would engage. And like, yeah. even if they tried to like tag a joke and it bombed or whatever, I was like, I appreciate the engagement. And sure. now it's almost entirely trolls. Um, and it, who happen to like so, not have a penchant for the Jews? I don't know what to say. Turns out, um, but it, it, I, I don't know. It's hard to let go of because I had been told for so many years, like you, oh, you, if you want to write for TV, you have to have a Twitter following. And so I built it up, and I'm like, I have people I really admire following sure. me on Twitter. Sorry, this is so sincere, but like people I really admire follow me on Twitter, and I'm like, it's not it's like what do I? Am I gonna message everyone individually and be like, follow me on? Go to Instagram. Threads? Also, my Instagram. Yeah, and, and like I'm not. I have a Threads account. I guess I have a Blue Sky account. I guess I don't pay attention to either of them. I don't really use them. I occasionally look at Threads, and it, it's like, and I go to my feed, and it'll be like, so and so tweeted 72 days ago. I'm like, okay, so no one else is here either. Like, no one. Yeah, it's a ghost town. Yeah, but the, I think the trick, like, this is okay. I'm about to sound real crotchety mm-hmm. for a second. Please do. The there is so much hypocrisy on Mm -hmm. Twitter that drives me bananas. And to be really honest, not to call out an app that I use all the time, there's a bunch of hypocrisy on TikTok as well. Mm -hmm. So like, this is going to get, we're going to get a little dicey. I'm in a bit of a controversial territory. Let's go for it. So like everyone was posting these videos about like the Danny Masterson Mm -hmm. verdict, okay? And everyone's like, he's so terrible, he does stuff. And I'm like, you know, agreed. 
Mm -hmm. And then these same people will be posting videos of them doing a new TikTok dance to CeeLo, who also has a very bad mm-hmm. history mm-hmm. of of sexual assault. And I'm like, cool. So Danny Masterson, we yeah. don't like, but let's get this new TikTok yeah. joint for CeeLo moving. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't like what is happening here. It's the, the look, I'm I consider myself progressive, but sometimes I think we're uh wayward is that the word i'm looking for i don't know what the word i'm looking that's not maybe you think of homeward bound that's probably not it and this is a lesser example but like this last week when lauren Bo- bober was caught like rubbing some guy's dick at a beetlejuice <laughs> thing and vaping the number of progressives that were like see look at what and i'm like guys let's not act like you didn't just come from a theater where you were rubbing some guy's dick and vaping like like i i've done it um <laughs> It's it's like I didn't know him. Call call her out for policy things that sure. are awful and how she's ruining people's lives and how she's an embarrassing hillbilly. But like to pretend that all of a sudden you're on some kind of like moral high horse where you're like vaping. Why <laughs> I never like get the fuck out of here. Half my friends are on mushrooms as they're watching that video. I'm like, oh, yeah. what are you doing, man? It just is so stupid. I'm like, you're not helping anything. No, the thing that bothers me most about that whole story is like. Is that she was at Beetlejuice? So what? I was about to say. So Are I haven't serious? seen the Beetlejuice musical. Maybe it does make you want to rub somebody. I don't know. I don't it's know. Like about a fucking horny zombie. What are we doing? Honestly, I I think I would have been doing the same thing. Um, and Honestly, I'm not God. ashamed to say it. Not the vaping; it would make me cough. But the rest of it, sure. you know, I do love that. Apparently, she was being loud, being like, "This is great," and I'm like, yeah. "Been there." Well, and then I feel like progressives made things actually work, like. It's like so, sometimes people will be too far, so far to the left that they loop back around and they're on the right because they were like, and the guy she was on a date with runs a bar where they have, uh, where they have oh, drag, drag queen shows, karaoke or whatever. And I'm like, you're fucking now you're coming for drag queens. Do you hear oh, yeah. what you just did? You fucking moron. And then it like caused her to have this whole like thing where she came out and was like, I didn't know he had a bar with drag queens in it and I never meant to date a Democrat and I'm like this is not what we were this wasn't the goal no this is embarrassing for everyone also like the planet's on fire people are dying and this is like I'm really the discourse right now but yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like yeah you're like the planet's on fire I'm like that's fucking yeah. true um no yeah I was just in Austin for two weeks it was 110 every day uh it's on fire I don't like I <laughs> I was in, God, everything I say just sounds like shit. I was in, um, on the same trip that I talked about earlier, so I'm not like mm-hmm. just traipsing around Europe. We were in London, and it was the hottest day in recorded record to the point where the train tracks were melting. And I was like, cool. So Too like, hot. Um, yeah, are we, like, are we all agreeing? There Maybe there's like a little bit of a, a problem here. Like mm-hmm. there might be a little like earth problem. We might have an earth issue mm-hmm. at the moment. And then we saw that like everything got great after COVID because people stayed indoors. And then all of a sudden, like the skies were stunning. And then people were like, we got to get back outside. Fuck the sky. And I'm like, okay, that all right. And yeah. we're back. We're back. It's pretty bleak. Yeah. We're in a bad spot. Um, what? This has gone dark. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, uh, so we're going to be closing this pod with Beetlejuice, the musical. We yes, license obviously. some of their music and uh-huh. um, we're just going to be playing that at the end. Um, we, we've rehearsed. Surprise. I genuinely find that to be the most offensive part of the story. Like wh- <laughs> why Beetlejuice, the musical and why? And she also said she 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 was yeah. got nervous because she was so excited. She was anticipating it was so excited. I was like the show that good like is it sure i feel like i have to see it you're now. like by the way everyone involved in the production would fucking hate you yeah can you imagine being a republican going to any kind of art event nope. everyone there hopes you die in your chair right now <laughs> like i i'm like just stay away 100 what are you doing i wouldn't i wouldn't want to do that like i no. there there are multiple comedians who have gone the path of super right you know right wing you mean failed comedians because that's always what happens that's always what happens they fucking can't do it anymore and then they make a turn it's my favorite thing my favorite thing i mean and i'll i'll call they get me i'm (sighs) please i need the attention on socials is there one person (laughs) where you're like you're like listen owen benjamin come after me he's terrifying terrifying but there is this thing on the like the fringe right wing comedians i don't even want to yeah strong strong word choice yeah 
but their whole thing is like calling people on the left snowflakes. But then if somebody doesn't laugh at their jokes, they're like, you're so fucking sensitive. You're a fucking pussy. You can't laugh at my jokes. I'm like, you know, people don't laugh at my jokes. I've been booed. I, I could care less. I go home and I cash that check and I go right to sleep. 100%. I don't care. You didn't like my set? All right. Write it down on a little piece of paper and light it on fire. I don't care. Get away from me. You know? I got paid. Like, I'm yeah. fine. And by yeah, the way. Jokes on you. You work at Walmart. <laughs> whatever you say. That, that you think is going to hurt my feelings, I can guarantee you both me and my fiance have said worse things to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, my own parents don't even like me. They're like not sold on the idea of Lisa Curry. So if you don't, that's okay. I, f- I feel like we need to go to the, the final segment. Are you ready for the lightning round? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You seem nervous by that. You're like, oh. I don't know because I take questions so seriously. I mean, you asked me what sport and I was like, uh, what am I? Oh, no. Like, what sport would I want to? And then I had to really think about it strategically. And I was like, well, what would do the best for me career wise, like in a longevity way? Like I took I, I could have said bobsledding, but I'm like, how is that applicable to networking? It's I wish not. I completely. Who do you know bobsledding. that's a fucking bobsledder? I know. No, I know. A people bunch golf of and they ski men. and that's how they close deals. <laughs> Question one, and again, they're fast questions. They do not have to be fast okay. answers. So really think it through. Okay. Um, what is a favorite ritual of yours? So mine is brewing tea. I love to make oh, tea for myself. I, you know, when I was just talking about this, to talking, am I saying this right? Am I just talking about? Okay. Do you smell ritual? toast? <laughs> just constantly, kind of just like a low, just like a little, br- like there's some burning crumbs. Yeah. yeah sure. Um, embers of my brain. Yeah. Um, oh, minor frying. Yeah. My favorite ritual is having coffee in the morning, and That's it's lovely. not even like I was telling it's it's become like this t- whole tick where i have to have three cups in the morning listen in a pinch i can get away with just having two three <laughs> like, cups <laughs> so i'm staying i'm living with a friend of mine now and her other close friend is in from out of town we're both staying there and he also drinks coffee in the morning but he likes one cup and this french press makes three cups and every day that he's there i have this like mental crisis because i'll share it with him and i have it down to like okay i drink out of this same cup every day and i pour it up to this place and that's how i know i'll have three exact equal cups of coffee but then when he comes and he has a cup of coffee obviously i'm going to share because i'm not a fucking psycho but then i'm quietly having a fucking breakdown in my head you're like i'm gonna and have to make like, a second bunch he's like do you still do you really because then i'll make a i will make a second one and i'm like well you have to have more because i can't have i can have a fourth cup but i can't have a fifth <laughs> That's so you much. know you're it's between three and five is your hot spot i i start between two and four i i really like something about three and it's not even i don't even know what it, it's a weird compulsive thing that it has to be fucking three cups of coffee and hit like i'll go to make another thing and he's like do you want more coffee i'm like i don't i just have to <laughs> have <laughs> i actively don't i'll be shaking and i'll make another you're like <laughs> coffee <laughs> Dear Lord, uh, question two. <laughs> what is a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh? I, I do uh, roast everyone when I meet them, though. I, and it has, there's, there's a few people in comedy that do not like me because they do, did not understand that I was fucking with them the first time I met them. So I'm just like, well, I guess that's gone forever. <laughs> I'm sure you're devastated by that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just like, well. You're like, Chris D'Elia hates me. Um, <laughs> no, I'm too old. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um. Question three, and mm-hmm. we're doing a brand new question for your episode. Okay? Oh, ooh, okay. It's a new question. Ooh. What is a controversial take that you have? So, for example, I can I'll give you an easy one for me. Mm-hmm. I think that that, and this is this is very lightweight. I think that marshmallows are awful. I think s'mores make no sense. Okay, and I don't understand why anybody would say that that's their favorite so thing. i can say something that's light like that we don't have to go hard we can go uh, listen i'll go hard too you i literally gave you danny masterson and CeeLo. i mean i'll go hard here's my controversial opinion violence is the answer <laughs> <laughs> and i mean like i mean like you know we see these nazis rallying in florida fucking mow them down <laughs> what are we doing i don't can I say something? i don't know if that's like a insanely i guess it's minorly controversial I don't. I have progressive friends all the time that are like, "No, you have to have a trial." No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Mm. I am talking fucking cement, like one of those one of those things that flattens out the street that oh. from Toontown that you know, like. I was just thinking of Poop and Roger Rabbit. Yeah. yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. Like I want Christopher Lloyd to come out in his getup, <laughs> and I want them to fucking steamroll all those Nazis. 
Goodbye. Oh, I'm, is your family sad? If Nazis and my family died, I wouldn't be sad because no. I'm not a pile of shit. Like yeah. just and I don't I'm not even saying like people with bad opinions or people that no, no. say fucked up things or like I mean like you're rallying in Nazi regalia, goodbye. Yeah. You're done. That's and it. He, yeah, if and, family and the goes- state seizes your belongings. All of your all of your assets go to the underprivileged. The oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this. The Jews want to take everything yeah, already. We, listen, we haven't even put the system in place. And I'm, I'm already ready. <laughs> I mean, I wish I, I it's disappointing that the left isn't also violent because that's what the right has on us. They're always going to win because they have the violence, you know. Question four. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, is there a particular moment that really sticks with you? Oh, I've definitely. I used to a lot. And now now, (laughs) you're like, no, now I think I am great. Now a little less often only because I look around and I see some of the half morons doing what I'm doing. And I'm like, Oh Jesus Christ. And I'm sorry that I'm doing this. Uh, It's like when you're a kid and you think adults have their shit together and then you're an adult and you're like, Oh, literally actually no one has their shit together. Not a single person, especially not politicians, especially. No, it's like just cause somebody wears a suit to work. Matter of fact, that means they lost. Yeah. You were, you're wearing a suit. You fucking lost the whole game. My guy. I haven't worn a suit since the last wedding I went to. But I'm like, I, I'm sure, I mean, there's been times where I've had, like, anxiety about stuff or, like, sure. you know, but um, I don't know. Now it's almost flipped where I'm, like, because I I think because I'm not, like, one of the quote-unquote cool kids in comedy or I feel like I'm not, like, I don't even think I've one met, of the, met. I'm not, I'm not on that list of top 100, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I'm, God. like, I'm in no danger of being on any, like, vulture list or anything like that. Danger. I'm, I'm always, yeah. I'm, you know what? Maybe that's a running bit I have. Like if if one of our friends is like tragically single and is like pontificating on like what her life will be like once she's, you know, in a thing, sure. in a relationship, I'll be like, well, she is in no danger of getting into a relationship. <laughs> Harsh and so Look, real. and I say, I'm like, I'm in no danger of owning a house. Yeah, yeah. You know? you're like, I'm in no I'm danger safe. of being on Vulture's list. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I... Uh, And now it's kind of flipped because I've had so many times where I've like had agents or managers or whomever tell me like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't. And then I would just do it. And I'm like, oh, I am. uh, okay. I'm going to like when I I recorded my album in London. Now this is just a brag. But well, we can link. We'll link it in the show notes. Oh, fun. Um, uh, thank you. It, I recorded my album alive for a while in London, and it was it's my first album. Mazel. And uh, thank you. And the reason, truly, when people are like, "Whoa, London!" I'm like, "Yeah, it looks cool," but also the the whole reason I did it over there was because I'm not like cool here, and so. Like I was reaching out to venues in the States and every venue was like, ah, yeah, we can give you like a Sunday night, but we won't promote and you got to pay us $500. And you, like the, just the terms were all fucked up where in London, there's this club that I do all the time. Top secret there. That is the most fucking fun in the world. And they don't really do album recordings in the UK. Everybody just does a new hour every year for fringe, but they don't do out. They don't record. They don't monetize it partially because they don't have serious XM. Anyway, that's a different thing. So I mentioned offhandedly to the um, the owner of the club, I was like, oh, yeah, I really want to record an album. And he goes, well, we would love to host you if you'd want to do it here. So I was like, oh, let me think on that. And we emailed back and forth and he staffed the whole thing. They promoted it to their email list. I sold out both shows. I kept the door like it w- just they treated me like I was fucking royalty. And I was like, yeah, oh, that's but I'm like that that's how it should have also been here. It's like dumb that just cause I'm not like varieties, top 10 comics of 1996 or whatever. Like I just, you know, well, no, it was 1989. <laughs> 1989. But then like at the time I had an, uh, a manager who was actively discouraging me from, he was like, well, I don't understand. Like you're going to record it cause he wanted me to go with a record company. And he was like, so it's a 50, 50 split. And I was like, no, that's a bad deal. He's like, it's actually a very good deal. And I was like, no one's half of my income in perpetuity. No, no. I was like, I'll do it myself. And he's like, well, I, you know, I don't know that you'll get it on Sirius XM. And I was like, I will though. And then you so did. I produced it. And yeah, I produced my whole album for like 600 bucks all in. And then 
made a fortune off of it on Sirius XM. Where I hope it's that like you fired this manager. I did. I did. Yeah. I still I like him personally, but I was like, this is not good advice. Last question for you. Uh, I typically I say, what is your favorite tea or comfort? But you drink tea, so what's your favorite tea? There's this tea I get at this little apothecary in Dunedin, Florida, and it's like a rose and something floral. It's so delicious. Although I have to say, this tea you gave me—that's probably my favorite black tea ever. We that's did it. Excellent. We did it, team. I we got it. into your tops. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? That's the pod. That was fun. That was you a lot. Feel good. Of fun. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. You're welcome yeah. anytime. Thank you so much. That was Lisa Curry. You can find her at Olympian Lisa Curry on Instagram and Lisa underscore Curry on Twitter. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping. So I was having six motherfucking cups of coffee a day to the point where, to the point where, I'm like stuck. Guys, my tongue turned dark brown. That's it was not like true. spotted. That's not true. It was no. spotted like a chow. And I was like, I looked at it and I was like, does chocolate stain your tongue? Oh, and God. then I brushed it and it didn't come off for like two days. And then I looked it up and it was like either from chewing tobacco or too much coffee. And I was like, oh, no. So then I had to cut back down to three cups. <laughs> I love how your cutback is to three cups. <laughs>